Hi guys. So I told you I was going to come on and talk to you about the channeling that I um, was doing. So I've been doing channeling for months and so far I've gotten through half of the zodiac signs and I wanted to share now because I had like a really important channel last night and it was very interesting too. So I never heard of before last night, Blu-ray beings. Okay. And all of a sudden I was taken to on my journey to myself as this Blu-ray being. And then this morning, I was shown the blue fire again, and I was shown all of this other information and spirit was like, okay, you need to sit down and you need to write this out. So that's what I did. I went straight from workout. That's why I'm like this. I went straight from workout to channeling and then my workout shirt was just too hot and sweaty and I just changed into this. It's hotter than snot here in the Seattle area. And I wrote out what I was channeling so that I could share it with you guys. Okay. So as I said, I started channeling these stories and I will be putting these stories out. Um, but I'm calling the, um, overall stories. I'm calling them celestial spark. Okay. And it is about the journey with the 13 tribes of stardust and you're like but wait a minute barbara there's only 12 zodiacs well there's actually 13. okay so i started channeling these stories like i said several months ago and it was as i was going deeper and deeper into the shamanic journeys that i do and so one thing i'd already seen several years ago and i don't know if i've ever talked about this with you all on the channel anytime but I saw myself when I was activated with light codes um, as a Reiki master, I actually saw my creation in this universe as an atomic being. Okay. And I originally was doing all of the different, the, all the different channels for each Zodiac as an independent. And then I was told this morning that no, they all needed to go together but I needed to start out. The first story had to be about this 13th Zodiac, the Ophiuchus, Ophiuchus um, Zodiac sign, okay? So Ophiuchus beings is what I'm calling us, all right? So I was told that they needed to be woven together in this way because they had not been done that way before. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. So before this universe existed, one of the things I've written about in my channels is that we all lived in what I call the soul space. And the space is unlike anything that we have ever known in this universe. Um, there is no timing. There are no physical beings. It is just an energetic space. And when I saw myself born into this universe during my, one of my um, master Reiki activations, um, I saw that we all, that the soul space had been flattened so that we could come here. Okay, that's the way the portal was opened. And I was, I saw myself, I was like all of the colors of existence in this atomic body. And I grabbed onto this leg, which I mean, it wasn't really a leg, but it was energetically. So speaking of the father of worlds and watched as he was co-creating what we know as home. Okay. And so I saw myself as the atomic being growing and I was weaving, exploring, weaving in and out of energy that surrounds us in this universe. And I realized in this moment when I was channeling this morning that I wasn't actually just exploring, but I was seeking something that was very profound. Okay. So 
this last shamanic journey that I took, I journeyed into the lower world. And it took me into a place that I go to often, which is these cold Scandinavian lands. And I don't go there that often. Oftentimes I'll come out in this beautiful meadow, but I do end up in the snowy lands quite a bit. And that's where my ancestry is from. Like my, I'm probably like 50% Scandinavian. Okay. So I was in this Scandinavian land and I was digging in the snow with my inner self, who was the wolf. And we were digging in the snow in preparation for our journey forward. Now, I was told in this journey that there will be a time within this journey that my inner wolf will be the only pack that I can turn to. Um, and I will have to be for a while on my path, the lone wolf. And I do feel like I'm already in that space, but I think that there's a little more to it that I haven't quite uncovered. But what I was given was that the positive energy here is that we are all Afiyukas tribe members, okay? And I'll explain that here in just a minute. So I was then taken into a cave and my um, my animal totem is mother spider and she was spinning a web around my neck into like a scarf. And she was showing me how I had spent too much time in the cold by blocking my throat chakra and that I needed to venture into my true emotions in order to tap into my deepest love connection, which I actually see this as a repeating cycle with many of the readings that I've done over the last year on the channel. So I moved forward and my wolf was pulling me, my inner self, right? Pulling me on a sled until I came to this huge fire. It was the largest fire, largest flame that I've ever seen. And this large fire, it was actually blue and it was showing up at that moment as my rage. And I have been really, like a lot of you, I've been truly angry and hurt, right? And the fire, I keep seeing in my journeys that I need to walk through fire. So it's like I needed to walk through this internal rage because I keep pushing it down inside of me, but um, energetically it's raging, right? And it shined at me and I saw it reflected in myself. And then I saw my divine partner as a mirror that helped me get all of this into focus. So I asked my divine partner, my mirror soul, okay, to come and look into my eyes and they did. And our eyes were being shielded with this blue energy. So we didn't speak, but the emotions were definitely pouring between us. I know a lot of you know a lot about that. And what I realized in that moment was that my anger was this fear, this internal fear of having another wasted lifetime, okay? So what I was given was that all that remains is that we have to let go of our anger and we have to allow our energies to be our blue beings. And what that is, is it's the blue rays, okay? So if this resonates with you as a blue ray, which I had never heard of before, but this is what they were showing me, um, is that we are very important you know, very empathic, okay, and very knowing and very energetic, right, which is why you are very tapped in to your divine partner in the energetic field. And we are here to activate and heal others. And so looking at this, I could see 
our, our true like blue bodies. And I could see between myself and my mirror, right, that the deep blue energy was like our pulsing heartbeats. And the reason that we're kind of falling away from each other right now is because after this activation, the real process is that we're supposed to be accomplishing our independent soul path forward. Okay. And that is all about, as a Blu-rays, healing your generational DNA. And that's something that you have to do alone. Now, of course, you know, I was activated to my mirror soul years ago, but here we still sit, right? There's still generational work, obviously, that needs to be done. And as I finished this journey, I did see that we were sitting together, our mirror souls, right, side by side. But there was a wall of pure white energy between us. And for now, that's where we're at. But I feel like as we have both completed the generational work, that wall will move away. So we each entered into this home, this universe, this earth, right, with like energy. Um, and as we all came here, we were all kind of peeled away, okay, is what I was shown, to experience the journey. There's a lot of energy, so you might see me going like this, oh, my nose. Um, so in this time of living with bodies, right, physical bodies, we are waking up to the knowledge that has lied dormant until we were ready for it. So I am an Afiukas being. Okay, I'm, I'm just claiming it. I'm an Ophiuchus sign, all right? Even though I'm not, like they're saying, NASA says that it's the sign that lies between Scorpio and Sagittarius, and that's not at all, like, my birth. But that is the sign that I have been shown is associated with being a Blu-ray. And it is about being, living between two worlds, right? Because you've got that whole um, Scorpionic death. And the Sagittarian is that replenishment of, the, of that, you know, the fire. Like it's going from death to the action of rebirth. And so the Ophiuchus sign is smudged in there. Okay, and so what I saw was the deep blue rays of the universe being sewn into the raw DNA body and that those of us that resonate with this, we do feel like we live in two worlds. And some of you have heard me talk about, because I do shaman, shamanic palmistry, and I've talked about how my, if you look at my headline, like I do live in two separate worlds. Like it shows up that I am in this realm. I want everything now in energetic fields. Like I'm just always in the intuitive. So I'm kind of walking with part of my being in what we call reality and part of my being in the intuitive energies. And I was also showed that, um, when I was awakened in this lifetime, it opened up a space within me of an energy cell that had been kind of like just hidden away. And then it started tapping into the sacred energy of the cosmos and beyond. And so this energy creates a very tantric fire, blue in nature, which um, also within the soul creates a restlessness that emerges. And I thought that was funny because a lot of the people that I work with, right, as a healer, they are going through this divine partnership. And those partnerships are passionate AF, okay, completely. And so I was also shown that blue is East, right, which is new beginnings, new breath, new life. And they showed me that we come out of the womb blue. And when we start to breathe, right, we pink up. And that pink is the energy 
of our parents coming together, right? The red and the white. Um, and it forms that, it's in order to form that pink heart chakra center so that we are attached still to our soul being. But they also showed me that blue is the Tumo Kundalini Awakening, okay? So we are emerging through the lunar eclipse portal into this new gateway that we're going to go into through the solar eclipse. So we are literally between two worlds right now. And so when we get to the lion's gateway, be really prepared that you're going to have this like incredible urge, if you don't already feel it coming on now, to purge all of this dysfunctional past lives into the sea of Pachamama and to let Pachamama heal and transmogrify it all. Okay. So you are a soul being called to this path because you're actually magnetically drawn to these energies. <clears throat> the Tumo is your inner blue flame, right? Of course, throat chakra as well. But it comes from the heart-mind alignment. When our heart and our mind are aligned, we speak and vibrate our truth. So over the past year or even years, many of you may have felt, right, from this awakening that you were slowly, the only way I could put it was slowly coming undone, okay? And you might have felt like you were losing your mind. You might have felt like you were losing your path. But the truth is, is what you were doing is actually coming back to what your soul was actually calling you to be in this and every life you've lived so far, all right? You're just being returned to that soul purpose. So Afiyukas souls, you're actually here changing genetic code at an ancestral level. And it's going back all generations, okay? So your life, if you resonate with that, is difficult. It has been difficult, okay? You have suffered a lot of trauma. And you've been very uncertain of your place within this world. And that's because what you're called is the lost souls, Okay, but you're found, actually. Um, as we move through what I call the 13 tribes, which is the 13 zodiac signs, um, you'll see over time that it's all aligned to us coming back into being one being. Okay, um, that's how we will eventually return to the soul space. So we are morphing and merging very slowly into this energy. And um, it's an energy of oneness. And a lot of people are feeling that energy. They're feeling that call to the fifth dimension or the new earth. So what we're being moved into or what we've actually moved into already, um, like eight years ago almost, was the next Ba'akhtan Okay, which I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Um, but it's, I talked about that in the story that I've channeled for chakra beings, which is what I see the energy of Taurus, the divine bull, as. And so what happened is we've now moved through, there's 3.3 years that we've moved through recently that were required to reset Mother Earth, okay, Alpha Mama and her kundalini energetic lines of connectivity, okay? And so what happened is we moved the kundalini energy from the east, which was the new beginning, and it's now residing in the south, which is the shedding of the past with the serpent bearer. Now, the Ophiuchus sign of the zodiac is, like, you know, the Aquarius is the, the water bearer, right? Well, the Ophiuchus sign is the serpent bearer, okay? And so the serpent bearer, the serpent being shedding of the past, shedding of what no longer serves us, right? Um, the connection to the indigenous tribes of South America um, who also really believe that they are from the stars and they are awakened souls, I believe we are actually living in 
what I call the 13th sephira, okay, which is the part physical realm, right, two worlds, and part higher metaphysical realm. So I was given the knowledge of the blue rays as that which you are aligned to and in the journey, okay? And this happened last night, and I was shown that those that are going to resonate with me sharing this message, that you have been activated or you are feeling the energy that you're about to be activated within this, and it's part of a collective engine of soul depth um, within this reality. And it's about that divine partnership, okay? It's the one that has been magnetically pulling you since the beginning of every time that you've sparked into another lifetime. Now, as a Blu-ray, you have the sole purpose to develop others and to heal genetics and to turn on and off epigenetics. Um, but you may be drawn to those that are deeply in need of healing, which leads you to a lot of these lessons, a lot of the karmic, like they're all karmic, even the divine partnership, I've said. It's all, right, lessons learned. But you're being drawn to those that are deeply in need of healing sometimes that are not ready to work or you might be connecting to a divine partner that is not ready for their own awakening okay and so what you need to know is that now your mirror once you've been activated your mirror energy is actually on like all the time okay and that as a Blu-ray, you will have times where you're going to hit that wall of energy and you're going to have these intense emotions like overwhelming rage and sadness and love and hate and ecstasy and all of the human emotions because you're feeling generations of energy from your own lineage and those that are being drawn to you to work on being healed. So when you feel like that, you need to reclaim, okay, and pull yourself back into this energy where you go into peace within, and then go through the process of doing them some things to make sure you're really clearing your energy, okay? There is a difference between having everybody's energy cling to you and holding space for it. Now, what they showed me was that this transformation for the Blu-rays, it will be hard, okay? And there may be a struggle with the one that you have a sole purpose connection with. But what's happening here for the Blu-rays is that the divine feminine energy is drawing you both to a balance point so that you can do the work that is yours to do. And I was told that when you start to feel, the word they used was very deconstructed, okay? Know that this is the fragments of your soul, right? Returning and taking resonance back up in your physical body. So make sure that you're being aware and being like healing and gentle and kind to yourself. So it says that you're going to move from feeling that you never belonged anywhere to then you're, when you work through this process, you're going to feel like you belong everywhere. The Blu-rays are the shamans, the magicians, the highly charged alchemists of energy healing. And so if this resonates, you've awakened and either your divine partner has also or they're about to, okay? So the best thing I can tell you about the partnership is that you have to be willing to step out of the runner chaser energy and allow them to heal as you're allowing yourself to heal, all right? They also brought me the story of the 12 Essene tribes, and they were the 12 tribes that have been told to have been seated on the planet, okay? And then they told me there is a reason why the Babylonians decided to leave 
the Ophiuchus beings out of the Zodiac lineage, and it was actually for protection. And because the 13th energy is actually been encoded in our hands, right, within the womb. And that's code, right, is within all beings born on the planet. And it's so to make sure that those Blu-rays could not necessarily be found and spotted because there is such a major part that we play. And they put it into our hands because they said our hands are each five. And five times 12 is the base of the Babylonian like math system, the number system. And they call it base 60, which is very much like the Mayan calendar. And it's a more divine time system than our own. But also because like our handprints and that, they're just encoded in the womb. So this reminder of our soul purpose is written in our fingerprints, it's written in our handprints in the womb, and then it's also woven into the lunar cycle and the feminine cycles of life to make sure that it's always being passed on. Um, I wrote in another book that I'm writing about how when a child is born without a brain, they are actually born without fingerprints. And so um, it's important to understand that. So also think about the tarot system, right? So 13 is the card of death and rebirth. And it's the role that the divine feminine has taken on in this universal journey. Within each of us, right, is that divine encoding. And it's also been called the soul of Tara or the lineage of the new earth that's being created. And you can't divine the number 13 into anything other than itself because it's this purity of light energy. Now, with many of the current stories I've channeled, I also keep getting all of this Scandinavian uh, mythology, this North mythology. And so they showed me that the um, 13th letter of the Norse alphabet is also signifying death and rebirth. And that's what I feel like we're in right now because we're in the new Bakatun, which is the Mayan calendar of 144,000 days. And so we just went through, um, you know, having been a decade into the birth of the 14th Bakatun, okay? And so what I found was that we've literally entered e pluribus unum, which is out of the many, one. So out of many lives, this one matters more than ever before. I've also been shown in the past that there are 13 levels of the Akashic record system. And as I've been saying in the readings this week, the fifth level is where karmic relationships are written about. And karmic relationships, again, are every relationship you had in your lives. And it's about lessons. Karmic just means lessons, okay? So that you're moving towards, it's the lessons you need to move towards your soul purpose in this current life. And it all resides on the fifth level in alignment with the base 60 code, again, for protection. Because... Um, it was being encoded that way so that not just anyone could go in and read and determine whose karmic lessons were going to activate this Blu-ray energy. And um, it's because there are what we call Akuras, okay, that have shared dimensional space with our beings and they would like to stop us from moving back to the soul space, okay? Because they are the ones who can feed off of our energy, okay? 
And if you look at just science, okay, science, there is the total mass energy of the universe contains 5% ordinary matter and energy, 27% so-called dark matter, and then the remaining 68% is a mysterious form of energy known as dark energy. And they don't really know what the dark energy is. But what I was shown is that it's mostly attachments of emotions and thoughts that break through where we have fragmented our auric shell, right, by not taking care of ourselves and clearing energy and, you know, eating right and all of those things. And they're sent to us sometimes with intentional means and sometimes without, but they're all measurable. But what I did also show, what they saw, showed me was that they reminded me of myself, seeing myself climbing out of the darkness, okay, into this universe, right, through the portal. And so that's what happened. When the soul space was flattened, it opened a portal and we came through the darkness into this universe. And then this universe was created from darkness came light and everything else. And so some of that dark energy just attached and came with us, right? And stayed here because it has its own desire to create. This is where the idealism of compassionate depossession comes from, okay? And when we're not well, when we let our energy levels and our souls fracture, we open up to let them feed on our being. And it happens more to the Ophiuchus beings than to most other beings. Now, one of the indigenous tribes says over in South America, one heart, one thought, one hand, one mouth, the people's path is now in light. And so I was reminded that the energy lies in the light, which streams out of the heart, mind, the hands, and the vibrations of sound to direct us where we are meant to be. So if we heal our being, then we heal our path. We heal the world in one energy of purity. But I also was reminded that we live within the stars. We live within the planets. And as you know, right now, Jupiter and Pisces, we're moving, you know, through Mercury retrograde, um, Saturn retrograde, we've had the in and out of Saturn square Uranus, there's all of this going on. And so it's always kind of influencing these positive and negative shifts within our emotions. But we have the energy of thought deeply instilled in us. And we are also very highly emotionally charged with the current Kundalini transmigration. So make sure that you're being very aware when you sit in fear, greed, death, scarcity. Okay. That lowers your vibration. That lowers your ability to work on your purpose. That lowers your ability to heal yourself. The duality is to raise up to the idea of life, love, abundance, okay, and tap into the oneness that you're already tapped into in the universe. And know also if you and your divine partner do not come into your soul's purpose in this lifetime, which is what you've required, right, then most likely you will either pass that on to the next generation and someone else, right? Like in your ancestral line, will have to pick up that soul contract or you will return in the next life and complete it. Now, they showed me that the younger generation of Ophiuchus beings, they are much more awakened than we are and they will easily step up to absorb those requirements from us. So I was told that we should do everything we can to hold strong to our journey. They showed me these as being crystals, okay, beings, these beings, these younger beings as being crystals because they absorb energy 
and that they've dealt with transformation and healing um, that goes beyond medical understanding, right? They, they either are, they have a lot of issues and then they suddenly can heal themselves. And they're often binary and very sexually fluid. And they don't really attach to our traditional fear mongering, but they're massive energy transmuters. And so they're always absorbing the karmic energy. And they're very young in their knowledge of clearing it before it harms them. And so we need to really teach them that when we're raising these crystals, okay? Now, the alchemical lesson for this session is um, very grand. Let's see if I've still got them sitting here on top. I do. Okay. So the first card that came out was inertia. And inertia is you are resisting the force of energy around you creating friction. I know you're creating friction or you wouldn't have any reason to watch these readings, right? I know unless I am forced, I will not create any changes today. That is a choice, okay? Now, Ophiuchus soul veins, right? <laughs> you hidden soul seeds, that is not your true path of light. And so they also told me that you can choose success, all right? You have the power to transform any moment on the path to victory. I have found the self-confidence to shine, attracting my rewards. And what they said to me was always work in the light on yourself and be sure to keep your auric shell shiny and whole. Okay. So you guys, much love. I know this was way beyond uh, my average woo-woo consciousness, but I was told it was too important to not share. And I love you guys so much. And if you resonate with this, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe. And much love. And this is the end of this channeling session. All right. So I will see you guys hopefully another time. Okay. Bye.